Hey, hey, welcome back to the Let's Play. Today, my friends, I want to change class. I would like to change to a little bit of a summoner loadout, and the armor we're going to be going for is the obsidian armor. Our loadout is mostly going to be the same, since this is a very sort of generic loadout, which I think would work for pretty much all classes in the game. And as a result of having ourselves our first set of summon armor, we should be able to allow our Abigail to get a little bit more powerful. But here's the thing, to really emphasize the power of Abigail, we need to make ourselves our first whip of the series. Now, of course, what we could do is go ahead and simply purchase the leather whip from the zoologist. That's something we could do right now. But I kind of figured, do you know what? We've got some all right weapons here. We could probably just head down to the jungle and get ourselves a couple of vines because that is all we need in order to make the snap thorn. So then, my friends, let's head on over to the underground jungle and let's start Farming out some of those man-eater grabber dudes. Those dudes that drop the vines, that is. And while we do so, I just want to say, if I may, a massive, massive thank you for all of your lovely support, kind words, and of course, your patience. I know there hasn't been an episode for a few days, but if you guys have been keeping up to date with the community posts on my channel, you'll know why there hasn't been any videos for the last few days. I won't mention what's been going on here, but I will leave a link at the top of the description if you guys are interested in knowing where I've been, essentially. But yeah. Just know this, we're back, I'm playing some more Terraria, and I'm still really, really hyped to see what we can get going in this world. So, let's go to the underground jungly jungle, shall we? Plenty of stars to pick up, by the way. That's pretty awesome. So you might be asking, well, Python, why are you suddenly deciding to change to a summoner loadout? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this is a generic Let's Play and anything and everything goes. One day I might be using my little melee loadout or maybe some of my other weapons. For example, the mini shark or whatever else. And then maybe another day I'll just randomly decide I want to change class. And that's what I love about these Let's Plays. I have the freedom to do that. All right, man-eaters, where y'all at, huh? No, you're not man-eaters, you are hornets. Hey, you are, you son of a gun. Are vines guaranteed from these guys? I'd like to say that they are, but I'm not 100%. I do feel like I get them more often than not, though. Hey, and what do you know? There is another one. I'm pretty sure three is the magic number of vines we are looking for. And would you look at that? We've actually just got them. That was nice and straightforward. So... Can we make it or not? Yep, there it is. The Slapthorn. 18 summon damage, 6 summon tag damage, and strike enemies to gain whip attack speed. Now, if we were to apply the Obsidian Armor buff to the whips on top of that, we're going to be having ourselves a very, very nasty, nasty whip here, folks. So, yeah, I'm very, very excited to uh, give this whole shaboodle a go, my friends. Some of you folks may have noticed that my inventory is looking a lot cleaner nowadays, and that is because I completely forgot you could put a lot of things in the void bag and they will still function. Like, for example, you could put healing potions in a void bag, and then even when you don't have the void bag open, you can actually still use health potions if needed. Because we've got maximum health, we don't need to use the health potions, so it won't allow us to. Same goes with buffs and food. You could put them in the void bag and then you can use them from the void bag. And of course, you can see all of my informational stat things on the right here. And that is because we've got all of our informational accessories in the void bag as well. I love the void bag. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Functionally, it's like one of the best items in the game, I would suggest. So in order to make the obsidian armor, we need ourselves quite a lot more silk. That's going to be the easy part, but we do need to take down another brain of Cthulhu so we could get ourselves some more tissue samples. That would be our limiting factor right now. We've got plenty of cobwebs here. I can't remember just how many we actually need though, so uh, bear with me. I am going to try to remind myself 10, 10, 10. So 30 bits of silk in total are needed. Well, now this is interesting. It actually turns out you make obsidian armor at a hell forge. I mean, to be fair, that does kind of make sense. It has obsidian in the recipe, and most other things that require obsidian do require the Hellforge. For example, you know, making Hellstone bars requires obsidian and a Hellforge. So it does make sense. So what that means for us is we need to grab ourselves all of this crimtain. We need to make ourselves a bunch of bars. I think we only need 12 for a pickaxe, right? Yep, there we are. Uh, Deathbringer pickaxe. This will allow us to hopefully mine 
the Hellforges in the Underworld. This should be easy street. But yeah, going back to what I was saying before, a massive thank you for all of your support throughout this series. I really do appreciate all of the love in the form of the comments, subscriptions, and likes lately. Of course, if you want to continue supporting this series, then please do be sure to head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like. It's by far the best way of showing your support for this series, and it really helps get these videos out there on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future Future content. Hopefully, we're going to be doing this daily again. And if you do want to go one further with your support, you can head on over to slash PC to check out my range of Apex gaming PCs. Or if you're more in the market for some Terraria merch, then head on over to terraria.shop and use code Python for a whopping 15% off your order. So here we are in the underworld. All we need to do is try and find ourselves one of those Hellforge thingies. And in fact, there we go yeah <laughs> all right we should be looking pretty darn good all right regular furnace your time has come to be at least temporarily retired i dare say we might wind up chucking that somewhere else in a different build perhaps but yeah all in all we're not doing too bad and i tell you something i totally forgot we've actually got chippy the clothier on our world which is amazing uh not only because it's chippy but also because <laughs> we have access to our familiar outfit yeah! Alright! I feel more like myself again! Oh, this is great! So then, Brain of Cthulhu. That is something we're going to have to take down in pursuit of the obsidian armor here. We need a grand total of 20 tissue samples. Wow, for some reason I thought it was way more than that. So it actually turns out I can make two bits of these armor right now. Yeah, and I know what some of you guys may be thinking. Well, Python, we've got access to loadouts now. You don't necessarily have to keep swapping things out. But here's the thing. This loadout here, as I mentioned before, it's a very generic loadout. It will work with all classes in the game. Summoner, Mage, Ranger, and Melee. But here's the thing. I would have to already take off my familiar outfit if I wanted to simply interchange the obsidian armor with the platinum armor here. I just think that there should be a dedicated vanity slot, like literally for things that only say vanity item on them and serve no other use aside from making you look different. Only here's the thing, we only have three loadouts and there are, what, four main classes of weaponry in the game? I mean, if you wanted to, you could make a couple of other classes. You could make yourself a fishing loadout, for example, maybe a mining loadout, and that would bring you up to a total of six, which, yeah, you could go ahead and squeeze into three loadouts, but it kind of rids the ability for you to have a vanity set on, which kind of sucks in my opinion. So my suggestion would be either a dedicated vanity slot per class loadout, or we increase the amount of loadouts we can have. I think either of those would be really, really awesome. I don't know if the Relogic devs are watching, but yeah, that would be rather nice. I've just realized something. I may have enough materials to be able to make a bloody spine. And then we could take down the Brain of Cthulhu at the surface, which I think would be quite a lot easier than down on the ground, perhaps? Unconscious man. Oh, there he is, in fact. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, so we've got this dude now. 50 defender medals, and then we can purchase a defender's forge. Another form of additional inventory slash storage. All right, well, at the very least, we should probably purchase for ourselves an Eternia crystal stand. Maybe a couple or a few crystals here. What about some of these here weapons? I mean, these are summon damage as well, right? Ah, lightning, explosive trap rods. Yeah, these bad boys. I love explosive trap rods. I think they're fantastic. I would go for these two, though, typically. Lightning aura rod for just continuous damage, and then explosive trap rods for the additional damage. Like, these two together are pretty damn nasty. And there it is, my friends, the bloody spine. So here we go. Let's zoom on out, and let's begin, shall we? <laughs> All right. Come on, then, you silly little creeper dudes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you are nothing like the green creepers on Minecraft. I'll give you that, but you're still kind of creepy with all those eyes. Ugh. Look at that freaking health bar, though. <laughs> and there we go. All right, already on second phase here. And now we just 
Yeah, just slap this guy around a little bit. Is that me? Or is this guy never ever the bottom left or bottom right one? Oh, wait, no, hang on. I might have spoken too soon there. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Uh, top left. Okay, interesting. Top left again. Oh, and he's dead. Okay, well, there we go. But I noticed throughout the second stage of that fight, the actual brain of Cthulhu was barely ever the bottom left or bottom right one. It was almost always the top left or top right one. Anyway, we're just about done. We got ourselves a whole bunch of tissue samples. We should get ourselves a whole bunch more from the bag. And we did. And look at that. We got a brain of Cthulhu mask as well. That's pretty cool. All right. What's cool above everything else, though, is the fact that we now have full obsidian armor. So we are going to be going from 30 defense down to 25. But check out the set bonus. Increases whip range by 30% and speed by 15%. And you're going to increase your summon damage by 15%. So, yeah, this is kind of nuts, actually. 27 summon damage with this and 9 with this. But we now have an additional minion slot, I do believe. So, so long as we've always got the bewitching effect on us, we should be able to do quite a lot of damage. Well, I'll tell you what, my friends. In terms of collecting pre-hard mode armor sets, we're certainly not doing bad, eh? <laughs> this is pretty cool. And actually, talking of armor sets, that reminds me. The comment of the day is actually relating to the armor sets. The Bruhi guy says, just letting you know that the golden fishing rod you get after 30 quests. Ah, uh, very good. I think I was asking whether or not it was 30 or 50 quests you have to do to get a golden fishing rod. 30 it is. That's awesome. Also, maybe you can make a new goal where you get every armor set and put them on mannequins and make a shrine out of it. That is a really cool idea. I mean, I have done an armor shrine before, I think in my previous normal Let's Play, but we only ever did it with the Celestial Moon Lord armor sets, you know, Vortex, Solar, etc, etc. We've never done it for, like, just generic armor sets, pre-hard mode armor sets, hard mode armor sets, all that kind of stuff, pre-Moon Lord, I don't know. It could be a cool idea. So let me know if that's the sort of thing you guys might want to see in this series. Maybe some sort of completionist goals. I mean, I'd be down for it. Just, you know, bear in mind it might be a bit grindy. You know what? We got the Eternia Crystal Stand a little bit ago. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to try the Tier 1 Old Ones Army with my new little summoner loadout of epicness. I guess the question is just how well is Abigail's Flower going to fare against Old Ones Army Tier 1? I don't know. I mean, I think it goes without saying these rods here, they would probably do the bulk of damage and then Abigail would just finish everybody off. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's only really one way to find out for sure how these things are going to fare. And that's to just give them a go, of course. Can we, by any chance, get ourselves a little bit more damage? Okay, so that's actually kind of all right. I'll take that. There we are. That's a bit more like it. Oh, no way. I've just realized the death weed here is blooming because we've got a full moon. Hey, that's really cool. Look at that. We've got 39 bits of death weed. Ah, oh, dude, that's going to keep us going for a long time. I really genuinely love this greenhouse. And I love the fact that we got it done nice and early in the game's progression. Because I like I keep saying, the earlier you get this stuff done, the better you're going to be in the future. I mean, look at this. We've got access to thorns, potions galore, archery, battle potions, endurance, so long as we keep on top of our fishing, and just so many other things. So then, my friends, in order to take on the tier one old ones army, we're going to be needing quite a lot of flat land. And unfortunately, looking throughout my world on the map here, there's not actually a great deal of it. I mean, I guess there's this bit over here that's quite flat, I guess. But what I'd like is to have a nice bit of flatland nearby my base. So, I don't know, maybe I could terraform this a little bit. I mean, we need to make sure we're not getting rid of this lake because it's pretty useful for fishing. But yeah, I think we could squeeze in a bit of flatland right here and hopefully it will be big enough to host the Old Ones Army event. So, yeah, I mean, let's just do it, I guess. I really like that these large trees are now going to act as like a separator between our spawn settlement here and the eventual Old Ones Army flattened arena here. <laughs> I like that. So then, ladies and gentlemen, it begins. The Great Flattening. Got our mining potion on. Got ourselves some improvements to all stats by food. We should be able to get this thing done relatively quickly. I am starting to think 
think that maybe what I should do to make this sort of the perfect size arena, maybe I should quickly browse the wiki, try to determine just how far away from the central end crystal the portals will spawn, and then we go from there. We try to make the maximum sized arena that we can have. Only the more space we have between the crystal and the spawn portals, the better things are going to be. The more time we have to take these down, you know what I'm saying? Oh, really, Terraria? <laughs> well, I guess the silver lining out of all of this is we're going to get ourselves more of a gel supply. Oh, here he comes. Hey there, buddy. You want to get absolutely riggedy, riggedy ruined? Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> Go on. Get out of here, you embarrassment. I don't even know why you even bother trying to spawn in, son. I don't even know. <laughs> What can I say? That guy got destroyed by my epic new summoner loadout. I guess you could call that our first proper little test with our little summoner loadout here. Alrighty, my friend. So let me throw some numbers your way. According to the Terraria wiki, what I'm reading right now, a minimum space of 60 blocks. So that's 60 blocks away from the Eternia crystal stand to the portal, that's how much you need in order for the event to even spawn in. However, you can have a maximum of a whopping 120 blocks away from the Eternia Crystal Stand. So, what I need to start doing, clearly, is a whole bunch of counting. And there's an easy way of doing that. We can do, where is it? There should be a ruler. Yeah. So if I just keep doing this, and then at the 10th block, we put down a torch, then we can use the torches as a bit of a marker. So there's one right there. So 10 blocks. That'll bring us up to here. So that's 30. I just really, really hope <laughs> that this space is going to be big enough. You know, the space that we're actually flattening out here. So here we go. This would be the center. Wow, that is a large amount of space, isn't it? So yep, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. And this center torch would be 120. Damn! <laughs> this is kind of nuts! This could be one giant Old Ones Army arena, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you something, my friends. This could not be more snug if you tried. The lake is right there. The lake we weren't wanting to rid, that is. The torch I just placed down, that was the 120 mark. <laughs> wow! This is actually a perfectly sized arena for Old Ones Army. This is brilliant. All right. Excellent. We now finally have this area nicely flattened. And, well, we should be able to get this event going now, finally. So then, Eternia Crystal Stand. There are the crystals themselves. We should probably get ourselves a few buffs over there as well. Maybe some campfires, heart lanterns, all that kind of stuff. The traditional stuff, really. Uh, Bast statue. Yeah, that'd be a good idea too, huh? Time to create ourselves a bunch of buffs. We're going to wind up putting all of these in our void bag. And then once that's done and dusted, then we'll pretty much get on with this thing. All right. All right, my friends, are we ready to kick some booty? I'm ready to kick some booty. I really am. Oh, look at that, a black lens. Wow. Normally, I wind up having great difficulty getting those bad boys in hard mode when it comes to going for the optic staff or whatever else, but... There we are. We just got it straight out. So then, buffs at either side of the arena. And then that should be it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Let's do this thing. Where have they spawned? Oh, look at that. Perfectly at the edges. <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely love to see it. All right, time to start kicking some serious booty. Right, it's the right-hand side I think I'm more concerned about right now because, well, these guys aren't taking any damage whatsoever. We need to really go at these guys and start chucking some stuff down, rather like that. There we are. All right, how's the left-hand side doing? Definitely plenty of guys rolling up, but a lot of them are very, very weak on account of the explosive traps. Maybe we could put ourselves one of these bad boys next to each portal as well. The more damage we do, the better things are going to be. It's as simple as that. Here we are. Wave two is done and dusted. I'd very much like to get myself a couple more traps on the go either side. There should be two ethereum mana over here. There is indeed. Okay, excellent. Right, let's get ourselves yet another trap down. <laughs> Easy street so far, my friends. But here we are. Wave three. Ethereum Javelin Thrower. 
Yes, the big guys. Yeah, go on, get out of here. I mean, they're getting taken down all the same. Wow, this is actually incredibly easy. I didn't think it would be this easy. Come on. So, yeah, turns out the lightning explosive trap combo might just be like the unsung hero of this event here because, oh my word, is it doing a lot of damage. Penultimate wave for the tier one old ones army. And everybody's getting ruined still. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I love this. I love absolutely ruining these guys' days. It amuses me greatly. They can barely get out of the bleeding portal for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? We got loads of traps we can place down there. Oh, hell yeah. All right, let's get ourselves another lightning one on the right hand side here. And yeah, there we are. Now we're going to be maximizing our damage. Ladies and gentlemen, final wave in tier one, Old One's Army. The dank mages are about to roll on in. Except they're really not. They're going to get absolutely ruined. Now I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure when I take down the dark mage, that is literally the end of the event. I mean, oh my word, that guy just did a crazy amount of damage to me. Did you just see that? 190. That's a big old yikes, isn't it? Oh, and there we are. This thing didn't take a single shred of damage. Wow. I would almost verge on calling that insultingly easy. Well, if that doesn't deserve a like, that level of absolute domination, then I simply don't know what does. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? Uh, that's the master mode drop, isn't it? Oh, that is so cool. We've got the war table as well. That's going to be mighty useful. The squire's shield. Hey, our first summoner specific accessory. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Hell yeah! So there you go. What can I say? All the preparations we made for this arena, and I'd say it's pretty much a perfect arena. Oh, wait, no. Hang on a minute. I've just realized something. Look at that buffs. When we get to the center... Ah! We don't get any regen around here. That's a bit of a yikes, isn't it? There is a pretty simple solution to that, though, and that is to simply move all of this stuff along a bit. All right. I think we've done it, my friends. This whole arena has been buffed nicely. No matter where we are in the arena, it is now completely covered with buffs, which is absolutely lovely. And I totally forgot about this functionality, my friends. A lot of you guys were reminding me in the comments area, correctly, might I add, that you could use the axe of regrowth to grow grass. We don't have to wait for it. We don't have to plant down grass seeds. No, no, no. It's completely unnecessary and a waste of money and resources. Just use the axe of regrowth. So then, my friends, on that note, I think it's going to be time to wrap up today's episode. A nice fun one above all else, my friends. We've switched ourselves over to a bit of a summoner loadout and we've had a ton of success with it today. So, if you guys have enjoyed today's episode and you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd head down beneath the video, spend a second to drop a like, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Watching. Thank you once again for all of your kind words and support and patience lately. I really appreciate it a ton. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.